Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm the head of the sleep surgery department at the Royal National ENT Hospital in Central London. And what I want to do today is tell you about a palatoplasty. A palatoplasty is an operation on the palate, and that's the sort of the dangly thing at the back of your throat that sort of flaps backwards and forwards. I'll try and leave a picture of that up here. Now a palatoplasty, so palato is the thing I just described, and a plasty means repair. Repair of that area means that you're trying to stop it from flapping around so much at night to try and stop snoring. An awful lot of people, however, think that if you repair the palate, it somehow helps you from uh, having sleep apnea. And I want to try and break that myth now. Operating on the palate does not improve sleep apnea. And I just want to get that really clear. And I'll try and explain it to you in this video. Now, to understand this better, you have to understand how the palate works. The palate is a flap of skin. So you've got the back wall of your throat here all the way up to the in your nose because your nose comes out here. I'll, I'll put a diagram here as well so you don't have to keep looking at my hands. But uh, you've got your nose sticking out here and you've got your teeth here, your tongue coming down the back of your throat. This is the back of the throat, the back wall of the throat. And your palate sits about there. This palate sits right back like this to stop air or food or anything going up into your nose. So when you drink Coke or, uh, or even have food, you don't want this palate sitting forward a little bit. So when the food goes down, it ends up going into your nose and you get your nose full of peas or something like that. What you're trying to do is let this palate flap right back like this and then the food and the water, everything go down the right way. Now, on the other hand, if you want to breathe and most people are meant to breathe through their nose like this all the time, you don't want the palate to be sitting there and blocking off your entrance to the nose. You want the palate to flap forward, sit on the back of the tongue, which is coming down like this. And so the air goes into your nose and back again like this. So you can see that the palate occupies two main areas, on the back of the throat or on the back of the tongue. It can't be in two places at once. And sleep apnea means that you stop breathing so to the point where you go slightly blue and you have to wake yourself up to take a breath. If you've got a palate that's blocking off your nose, well then you can just breathe through your mouth. If you've got a palate that's dropped forwards onto the tongue, well then you can just breathe through your nose. So you can't get sleep apnea from um, from your palate. It has to be from somewhere else. Just in the same way, when you have a blocked nose, you don't suddenly get sleep apnea. If a normal person with no sleep apnea at all and you end up getting a cold or something like that and you can't breathe well at night or you feel very blocked up, you're just feeling really unwell and you've got a cold. You don't have sleep apnea. You don't suddenly get sleep apnea for a few days while you have the cold. But in the same thing with the palate, if the palate is sticking up there and just say stitched in that position, you can still breathe through your mouth. Or if it's stitched in the other way and you can't eat or drink, you can still breathe through your nose. So unless your nose is completely blocked up and the palate is stuck down to the floor of your mouth, you can't get sleep apnea from a palatal problem. It has to be something else. So that's why only operating on the palate will not solve your sleep apnea problem. It may, however, help the snoring, but it doesn't stop sleep apnea. Now, there is a slight caveat to that. Sometimes people have uh, say this is the back wall of your throat again and this is your your teeth are here and the tongue going down the back of your throat here sometimes the tongue is a problem and it falls back like this and there's a very narrow passage between the back wall of your throat and your tongue coming back there sometimes there's a last bit of hole left uh, for you to breathe through and the palate the uvula the dangly bit of the part of your uvula drops into that last bit of hole and you can't breathe and so you're right if you shrunk down the uvula or stitched up the palate or something Yes, you would feel better in terms of a sleep apnea point of view and your your readings would look better for a short time. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is that your tongue is falling back and that last bit of airway left behind gets corked by your uvula. And so shrinking the uvula does sometimes help for less than five years typically. But uh, a palatoplasty will only help you at maximum about five years because it's not really the problem of the palate. It's a problem of the tongue, which the palate just makes slightly worse. I, ho I hope you understand that. Don't be fooled into thinking that just doing a simple palate operation will solve your sleep apnea problem. It does help snoring. And uh, when I get time, I'll talk about palatal surgery, lacrypharyngeal surgery, all those sorts of surgeries. But I, I want to try and break that myth. And the same thing about nasal obstruction as well. A lot of people think that, oh, um, I think my snoring, sleep apnea comes from my nose. It's, it's just not true. Snoring always comes from the back of the throat. It doesn't come from the nose. And I've got another video about that over here. So you can have a look at that. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching this video. Take care. Bye bye.